This is section 11 of Mark Twain's Journal Writings, volume 1, by Mark Twain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Taken from Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, The Century, a popular quarterly magazine, January 1885, printed Jim's Investments and King Solomon, by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. Jim knowed all kinds of signs. He said he knowed most everything. I said it looked to me like all the signs was about bad luck, and so I asked him if there weren't any good luck signs. He says, Mighty few, and they ain't no use to body. <laughs> what you want to know when good luck's come for? Uh, want to keep it off? And he said, If you's got hairy arms and hairy breasts, it's a sign that you're going to be rich. Well, there's some use in a sign like that, because it's so fur ahead. You see, maybe you's got to be poor a long time first, and so you might get discouraged and kill yourself if uh, didn't know by the sign that you're going to be rich by-by. You got hairy arms and a hairy breast, Jim? <laughs> What's the use to ask that question? Don't you see I eyes? Well, are you rich? No, but I've been rich once, and going to be rich again. Once I had fourteen dollars, but I tucked to speculating and got busted out. What'd you speculate in, Jim? Well, first I tackled stock. What kind of stock? Why, livestock. Cattle, you know. I put ten dollars in a cow. But I ain't going to risk no more money in stock. The cow up and died on my hands. So you lost the ten dollars? No, I didn't lose it all. I only lost about nine of it. I sold a hide and taller for a dollar and ten cents. You had five dollars and ten cents left? Did you speculate any more? Yes. You know that one-legged nigger that belongs to old Mr. Bradish? Well, he sort up a bank and say anybody to put up in a dollar would get four dollars more at the end of the year. Well... All the niggers went in, but they didn't have much. I was the only one that had much. So I stuck out for more than four dollars, and I said if it didn't get it, I'd start a bank myself. Well, of course, that nigger wanted to keep me out of the business, because he said they weren't business enough for two banks, so he say I could put in my five dollars, and he'd pay me thirty-five at the end of the year. So I done it. Then I reckoned I'd invest the thirty-five dollars right off and keep things a-moving. And there was a nigger named Bob that had catched a wood flat, and his master didn't know it. And I bought it off him and told him to take the thirty-five dollars when the end of the year come. But somebody stole the wood flat that night, and next day the one-legged nigger say the bank's busted, so they didn't none of us get no money. What did you do with the ten cents, Jim? Well, I was going to spend it, but I had a dream, and the dream told me to give it to a nigger named Balaam. Balaam's ass, they call him for short. He's one of their um, chuckleheads, you know, but he's lucky, they say, and I see I weren't lucky. The dream say to let Balaam invest the ten cents, and he'd make a raise for me. Well, Balaam, he tucked the money, and when he was in church he heard the preacher say that whoever give to the poor lend to the lord and bound to get his money back a hundred times so balaam he took and give the ten cents to the poor and laid low to see what was going to come of it well, what did come of it jim nothing never come of it i couldn't manage to collect that money no way and balaam he couldn't i ain't going to lend no more money got to see the security I'm bound to get into your money back a hundred times, the preacher says. If I could get the ten cents back, I'd call it square. I'd be glad of the chance. Well, it's all right anyway, Jim, long as you're going to be rich again some time or other. Yes, and I is rich now, come to look at it. I owns myself, and I is worth eight hundred dollars. But livestock's too resky, Huck. I wished I had the eight hundred dollars, and... Somebody else had the nigger. I read considerable to Jim about kings and dukes and earls and such, 
and how gaudy they dressed and how much style they put on and called each other your majesty and your grace and your lordship and so on instead of mister and jim's eyes bugged out and he was interested and he says i didn't know there was so many of em i ain't heard about none of em scarcely but old king solomon unless you counts them kings that's in a pack your cards how much do a king get get i says why they get a thousand dollars a month if they want it they can have just as much as they want everything belongs to them ain't that gay and what they got to do huck they don't do nothing why how you talk they just sit around no is that so of course it is they just sit around except maybe when there's war then they go to the war but other times they just lazy around or go hawking just hawking and sp sh dear noise we skipped out and looked but it weren't nothing but the flutter of a steamboat's wheel away down coming round the point so we come back yes says i and other times when things is dull they fuss with the parliament and if everybody don't get just so he whacks their heads off but mostly they hang around the harem round the witch harem what's the harem the place where the he keeps his wives don't you know about the harem solomon had one he had about a million wives why yes that's so i i done forgot it a harem's a bowden house i reckon most likely they has rackety times in de nursery and i reckon de wives quarrels considerable and dat creased the racket yet they say solomon de wisest man that ever live i don't take no stock in dat because why would a wise man want to live in the midst of de such a blim blammin all the time no deed he wouldn't a wise man would take him build a biler factory and then he could shit down the biler factory when he want to rest well but he was the wisest man anyway because the widow she told me so her own self i don't care what de widder say he warn't no wise man nuther he had some of the dat fetches ways i ever see did you know about dat child dat he was gwine to chop in two yes the widow told me all about it wild well, dan warn't dat de beatin'est notion in de world you just take a look at it a minute dat's de stump dah dat's one of de women here's you dat's de other one it's solomon and dis your dollar bills de child before an you claims it what does i do does i shin around amongst the neighbors and find out which in you de bill do belong to and, and hand it over to the right one all safe and sound the way that anybody that had any gumption would no i take and whack the bill in two and give half in it to you and the other half to the other woman that's the way solomon was going to do with the child now i want to ask you what's the use to have a bill can't buy nothing with it and what's the use of half a child i wouldn't give dern for a million in em but hang it jim you've clean missed the point blame it you've missed it a thousand mile who oh, me go along don't talk to me about your pants i reckon i knows sense when i sees it and they ain't no sense in such doings as dat dispute warn't about half a child dispute was about a whole child and a man that think he can settle a spute about a whole child with a half a child don't know enough to come in out in the rain don't talk to me about solomon huck i knows him by the back but i tell you you don't get the point blame the pint i reckon i knows what i knows and mind you the real pint is down further it's down deeper it lays in the way solomon was raised and you take a man that's got only one or two chillin is that man going to be wasteful of children no he ain't he can't afford it he knows how to value em but you take a man that's got a, about five million children running round the house and it's different he is soon chop a child two as a cat days plenty more a child or two more or less want no consequence to solomon dad fetch him
End of Jim's Investments and King Solomon by Mark Twain. And end of Mark Twain's Journal Writings, Volume One. Read by John Greenman.